cost of living crisis seems to be getting worse. New figures today show prices are continuing to rise at a faster rate than wages, meaning the pounds in your pocket aren't going as far as they did. But it's good news for the job market, with unemployment down and more jobs available. With Parliament in recess, we are also going to talk about the role of select committees in our democracy today with my next guest. I'm delighted to welcome to the show Stephen Timms, Chair of the Work and Pensions Committee. Hi, Stephen. Good to see you. Hello, Gloria. Nice uh, to see you. The Office for National Statistics say that the number of UK workers on payrolls rose by 108,000 between December and January at 29.5 million. Do those figures mean that we have come through the pandemic intact as far as the jobs market is concerned? Well, unemployment, we're certainly recovering. Unemployment, as you said, is down. The, the big feature of these numbers, though, is that there are lots of work before the pandemic who are not working now and it does because there are lots of people particularly old people although they haven't got jobs they're, they're not looking for jobs either they seem to have kind of all the labor market altogether they've become inactive and that's a big part of the reason why we've got 1.3 million vacancies a record number of vacancies across the economy lots of employers struggling to find the people they need to do their jobs at the moment and a, a big part of the reason is lots of people just not bothering to look for a job at the moment. So that's what I think we're going to have to turn much more attention to over the next few months, how we bring those people back into the labour market. Is it carrot or stick, in your view, to get them back into the labour market? I, I think it's got to be carrot because these are people who are living on something at the moment. We don't exactly know what their savings or other family members or, or something. So there's no stick the government has got to force them back to work. They don't, they've decided they don't need to work. So we've got to encourage them. Uh, we've got to find ways of making it attractive for people to uh, come back to jobs to fill up these vacancies, which there are so many of at the moment. And the news on wages is problematic, and perhaps that is part of the reason why people don't see it's worth going back to work. What sort of solutions does your committee have in terms of getting wages, a fair day's work for a, for a, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work? Well, uh, as you say, prices are going up faster than wages at the moment. So in real terms, wages are falling. Um, we took evidence from the Secretary of State about this last week. I mean, our committee, we're the DWP's committee, so we're scrutinising what the DWP is doing. And we're looking particularly at the position of people on benefit. And, you know, we've just seen the government decision to uprate benefits from April by 3% at a time when we know inflation by then is going to be 6% or, or maybe more. So we were pressing the Secretary of State what the government is going to do to protect the position of people like that, whose, whose income is, uh, is already very low. And I must say, we didn't get very persuasive answers. In terms of what we do to increase wages, um, that's different, a different select committee that, um, that deals with that. The government has, of course, raised the national minimum level, the so-called national living wage. Um, but as we're seeing from these figures today, wages are still not keeping up with prices. You are chair of this uh, powerful select committee. It is cross-party in its nature. Um, how do you choose the subjects for inquiry? Is there any remit for the public to get involved in how you determine what subjects are important for you to look at? Yes. I mean, we're certainly very interested to know the things that people think we should be inquiring into. I mean, our job is to scrutinise on behalf of Parliament the work and the policies of the Department for Work and Pensions. And we do that by holding inquiries and between the members of the committee, we choose which subjects we want to inquire about. Um, and every now and then I, I get emails from people suggesting we ought to look at a particular topic and I'd, I'd welcome more such suggestions and I'm sure other members of the committee would be interested to hear from members of the public about that as well. Um, 
we carry out the inquiries by uh, taking evidence, written evidence primarily. So when we launch an inquiry, we invite anyone who's got views on the subject to send them into us. We are at the moment doing a survey as part of one of our inquiries on uh, health assessments for disability benefits. We're asking anyone who's had experience of getting such an assessment or helping someone else have such an assessment to complete our survey so that we know more about people's experience of how the system is working at the, at the moment. Um, and then we, we take oral evidence. So people, typically people who've sent us in views in writing, if they've got particularly interesting views or views we'd like to find more out about, we ask them to come to meet the committee. Uh, we meet every Wednesday morning and we put some questions to them to explore their views further. And, and finally, uh, Stephen Timms, and a different subject. Uh, I interviewed you last year. Um, you told me that you hoped to meet the woman who had stabbed you at a constituency surgery. She, she's uh, in prison. Um, it was an interview that stays with me. I think about it a lot, actually. I just wondered if there'd been any progress on your desire to meet that, that woman. Uh, well, thank you, Gloria, for asking. Um, no, there hasn't. Um, I have heard uh, last week from the restorative justice team in the Metropolitan Police, and they said they did hope to come back to me shortly, but as yet, there hasn't been any further progress. Stephen Timms, as ever, it is a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Today. Thank you, Gloria.